Well, you could say that um, we started the development. It was um, an announcement from the Federation UIPM that they want to go in London 2012 for the Olympic Games with laser technology. And since I was at 2009 stage uh, occupied with laser technology for about five years already, I asked about the conditions and the reglements that they want to have for the shooting. So after a while, half a year or so, we got the requirements from the ULPM. And then there were something like four companies uh, competing for the new technology. And we were lucky enough to uh, beat everybody. I think the most decisive thing was that we have uh, adopted the original barrel from a pistol and we put there our so-called laser container which in the end kept all the sensation of a shot of the air pistol. It felt and it sounded exactly like the original thing and the shooters could uh, exchange for laser and barrel so that means they could use the pistol for two different competitions. I think this was the major success and the UAPM I don't know about their decision, I just heard what they decided to us. They said that they liked this idea, so we were forced to actually introduce the whole system in the Youth Olympic Games in 2010 in Singapore, where we then started all this development. The, the thing with the initial ignition for for laser shooting you can't say that this was my role the thing was i had some ideas and i was occupied with um, how can you make laser shooting adoptable for olympic games because i'm a big fan of the olympics since i'm actually 11 years old in 1972 i watched my first olympic games in munich on a brand new color tv of my grandparents and this story took my life somehow in the hands because I was so fascinated that I told my parents I want one day to get involved with the Olympics. So since that day I tried to, to struggle as a rider, as a shooter for the Olympic Games, which I quite didn't make. But in the end I found a new field, the laser technology, which was brand new more or less, and we had the ideas how to adopt the system, how to make it suitable for the Olympic Games, how to fulfill all the requirements of the UIPM at the time. So this was the reason why we actually got um, this deal and why we did this. So I think uh, our system set the brand marks and uh, is still top in whatever it can deliver. The steps actually were made by the UAPM themselves. They, the president had the vision that he wanted to go for laser technology to make shooting go to the people, be adoptable in stadiums like this. So the excitement was to get rid of the shooting range, to get rid of many judges, try new technology and make it safe for the Olympic uh, competitions. So the decision and the visionary idea to put it to the modern pentathlon was the, by Dr. Schoeman, the president of the UAPM. But I guess it was not bad that he asked uh, the guy called Klaus again to do the thing in the end. It is true. I was on three Olympic Games before I entered the modern pentathlon world. Um, this was always connected with shooting because I, my heart was beating for the shooting sport. So I tried to do developments in television uh, perspectives. I put TV cams in front of shooters. We did the scoreboard technology in Athens in the Olympic Games. And in Sydney we started actually something which is totally common technology today. We started interviews from the basic houses of the teams, like the German house, the Czech house, the British house, whatever. They always make those houses. And we started in, 20, uh, in 2000, in Sydney actually, to put this to the world. So actually you could say that I was all the time involved in promoting shooting sport, promoting the Olympics and promoting um, to get all the data, all the information to the people.
Having said that this whole new uh, idea was totally brand new, uh, nothing of laser technology which would be suitable for the Olympic Games was done. So actually all the ideas, the thinking, the engineer work, that was all done in the brains, but in theory. So we needed to actually find people who can produce lasers, who can produce the circuit boards, who can do the carving of all the stuff that was necessary in the industrial production of this. And we have the task that if we would do it, we would be um, obliged to actually finish the whole thing within something like half a year. So I would say for an entrepreneur and somebody who wants to do this on a business basis to make money, this was a totally um, kamikaze flight. In the end, um, it was so that we didn't know if everything that we invented would work out. But in many tests in 2010, we proved that the ideas were good and we could show to the world that actually the IQ laser technology is far advanced to any red dot on the wall, like I called the normal laser shooting which was there at the time. And cross-firing, anti-cross-firing, pairing targets to a pistol so that nobody else could help or shoot the other target, issues which are big issues in the real shooting, and safety issues, being in laser class one, not exceeding any power that was allowed for the safest, kid safe, eye safe laser technology. That was all done by my colleagues and my engineers. So I'm actually very proud that we still with our system today, in 2015, are the ones which can handle the lowest energy power with our targets until today. Actually, the change from pellet to laser was announced in a schedule to August 2010 in Singapore. And if I had doubts in the development phases that it doesn't work, actually no. Because we had the proof of concept, we had our boards already ready. The only thing that we needed to react to was we needed to talk to the customer, means we needed to talk to the UIPM, we needed to find out is everything that we developed to their needs and eventually they would come up with totally new ideas which needed to be adopted and that was one critical part after the Olympic Youth Olympic Games in Singapore when we introduced all the technology and it worked totally fine but of course since we developed this and since we are very careful about what happens how does it work did everything go to our needs did it all work out totally 100% as a developer, we were not satisfied, so we needed to go on with the development. But from August 2010 to January 2011, when the inauguration of this whole system should take place, we didn't have much time. So doubts I never have about my engineers, my partners and the product, but it was of course time critical and we needed the help of all the companies. And it was something like seven companies involved at the time and 70 people working more or less non-stop on developing this whole thing and it worked out we were a little bit late with the development with the delivery in the end but it was only two weeks so eventually some athletes came to the place in Zarazota when it was started the first time in the US and those people got their pistols and their containers on the spot but since this was nearly for everybody in the world the same it was very fair again and since that day we are present Actually, for me personally, the most decisive thing was I wanted to be another time, my fifth time, involved in Olympic Games. I wanted to be there to show the world that laser technology is working. And in November 2011, my engineers introduced to me the new PPLT precision target, which until today is the first ever laser precision target which can capture the shot in the first two milliseconds. Means if you handle a gun and you know that it's shaking, be sure with that target you could get the very first spot, the very first impact 
which for us is the decisive moment when the bullet would hit the target. So when in November 2011 already, I saw in our test laboratories how our drilling lever machine was delivering shot by shot in 2.6 seconds rhythm and I could see how precise the target was capturing this and I compared this to all the other targets I was actually this was my personal breakthrough because afterwards to go to the Olympics in London was all then procedure and of course it was so that I was very proud to be in the Olympic Stadium to see all those stands and all the people there being in the center spot but nobody knew it was us so it was no um, big applause no la ola nothing like this but it was a very satisfying um, very satisfying feeling for us actually um, if you ask about the athletes it's a big issue because as i just said in Zarazota 2011, the first time ever, all the people took off their barrels from their guns and put on this laser technology. So, no communication before possible to trainers, to athletes. The officials, of course, knew about this. Some of the people watched the videos that we did. But for an athlete who is used to shoot pellet technology, comes to a totally new kind of event, the combined event was just introduced a year before and now they needed to shoot with lasers. Eventually the athletes were, what is this? How does this work? What do I have to do? And the only thing that we could say to them is just trust that when you shoot the shot, the, fire, the, the laser fires and the target will capture this. We changed for the World Cup season in 2011 from the so-called precision target from Singapore to the hit and miss targets from Operate IQ, means our targets, because we found them more fair for the athletes. We were capturing with that signal the 21 milliseconds, which we decided with UIPM to be the shot length, and the whole signal needed to be in the black to score a shot. So this gave a kind of confusion to the athletes, but all, after all, I can say that they all took it very brave and a lot of problems came afterwards when changing to the so-called, again, precision targets, which have not been pre precise enough until this year when new changes have been introduced. So I can say that for my personal wish, I would love to take the athletes and the trainers much more close, train them more, give them more educational work, give them more background, give them more details and make it open. Like this interview is meant to be watched by everybody who wants to know what is it about the technology and everybody who wants to have a question with me or a word with me, just do. You find me on the website, you can always ask any question you have. Our strive is to be the kind of Mercedes, the German Mercedes brand car or here the container um, in this world and the slogan that they have been doing um, nothing but the best applies to us too we want to deliver the best technology so whatever question the athletes or the trainers or whoever may have just ask contact us with email get to the website we will try to answer and we will do our best to keep our technology on top of the heap The actual situation um, now, 2015, is many people decided they don't want the air pressure anymore. So actually what we have now is a pistol that only gives the click, which makes the loading and um, working with the system on a uh, competition much easier because you don't need to fill the air cylinder anymore. Um, to make this happen, the technology is actually exactly the same like before. We just needed to take care that the switch which we used is sensitive enough to trigger the shot. And as you may be able to see inside, we can shoot much better. The shot is just triggered by the click of the pistol. So actually, a current version of the multimedia pointer, as you can see, is um, made by a friend company 
uh, Gerd Mannel in Austria and he presented this uh, kind of new technology pistol to me with some new devices like a new cocking mechanism which makes it easier for the pampered leads. You are actually very quick with loading and cocking. And for me as a shooter, the decisive moment is actually this. When you trigger the shot. For this, you need a proper precise trigger mechanism. Those trigger me mechanisms are entirely done with mechanics. So the price of the whole thing is a bit more expensive than the plastic versions which are on the market today. But this kind of device costs netto 1000 euro. So actually it brought down the price with help of Gerd Mendel and his company and our company to half of what it used to be before. So if you take this in terms with your car, just imagine you could buy a 100,000 euro car for 50,000 euro or in other dimensions if you could get a stereo or a TV set which is now 500 euro for 250 euro. As we don't make the numbers with those pieces, it will not go down much more dramatically because I'm, I would love to see the world using this uh, entirely for shooting and we are working on competitions. But I think this is a development which will take another 10 years. So for the moment we are happy for the people who use it and we are happy for everybody who sees that aiming, concentration, brain work, the body control, that those are the main issues which you can perfectly train with those devices. And you are totally close to the real shooting. People who train on this device use this for real shooting as a training device. They get much better in their training because we have so many devices or so many things which can be used as this laser, which you can see now. It can be visualizing your trend, like your tremble, your feeling, how you do with the gun. So it's a really brilliant training device even for sport shooters and that's the way ahead and that's where we want to go. To the future perspectives of this, the young athletes, like you see in the background running, those are the kids now training in Warendorf, here in Germany, the mecca of modern pentathlon in the old times. It's reviving, and I say, if you see those kids running here behind, they will be shooters, they will go shooting, they did shooting already. They need to have people who do technology which works for them means in the future, with the new UAPM code, with the new standards that have been set now by experts, let's try to make this work fair so that those kids in eight years in the Olympic Games can have a fair competition with all the perfectness that we actually expect from devices that we would buy in a shop. And I hope that all the people who are with us in the technology will help to make it more safe and to make it more reliable because a missed shot which is not registered is as bad as a hit shot which is not registered so a non-registered shot is the nightmare of everybody because it means at least three to four seconds standing and if this happens three to five times in a match it's horrible because the athlete is just not treated fair Okay, where are we going with our laser technology? I don't want to stop on pistols or rifles, which we did already and which we successfully uh, promote in the biathlon area in Germany. No, I want to go actually to put the idea of the concentration part further. We have developed, like in our logo, a matrix which is consistent of 25 targets where you can do actually patterns, you can shoot patterns, means the brain work is even harder for the people who try this out. And for all the people who don't like pistols or say, this is nothing for kids, you can't give them a pistol or a rifle, we have a magic wand. Means we have a device that works like Harry Potter's magic wand and you can shoot or point with this without being connected anyhow to shooting. So this is the way ahead for us, that we want to find partners and people who join in this technology to make this successful because just imagine a kid runs in a room or outside and has targets to hit because this is the 
strive that human beings do. They want to hit point somewhere and then opens the door or starts a balloon or flies whatever. It's a world which can be way beyond and can be integrated in Universal Studios, Disneyland, whatever. This is what we want to do in the future besides our sport activities. Actually to the, the gun owners, just be safe. We don't want to take away any of the pistols existing in the world. The only thing that we would like to do, or my vision, my personal vision is, that for me shooting was always aiming and getting close to the target. A perfect 10 is like um, a little orgasm in the brain. So whenever you want to shoot the middle and to hit the middle of a target, and you can do this repetitively, it is very satisfactory. And when you, when you can control your body much better than others, it's very satisfying as well. So the technology is safe. It is very, very similar to real shooting. Uh, it is no real shooting, this is clear. But if you train with this system and you use it for your training, you can make your body work better, you can do your concentration work better, and actually I'm daring to say that you can enhance your IQ. So that means use your IQ to enhance your IQ, and we wish you much fun and success with this. For any questions, just come back to us.